So one of the reasons that we like to study piecewise functions is because they're a useful way to study this idea of continuity. Um, so continuity is a big idea in calculus, and it's something you should be a little bit familiar with before you leave pre-calculus. Continuity is maybe exactly what it sounds like. So think of the word continuous. So continuous comes from continue, obviously, meaning it goes on and on. Um, here's a definition. So a function is continuous on an interval if you can draw it without picking up your pencil. Okay, so that's not a very rigorous definition. We're going to develop this a lot further next year in calculus. Um, but this is this will always work. This will help you figure out if a function is continuous if you can see it's a graph. And it's a great way to jump into this idea. So I put this graph here. This function is continuous on this interval here because I can draw it without picking up my pencil, my writing tool, right? It is not continuous around x equals 2 because it has this jump in it. And then it's continuous for a while, but it's not continuous at x equals 5 because it has that hole in it, okay? Um, so we'd say a continuous interval. We'll list a couple. Continuous intervals, and I'm just going to use inequality notation, so would be x between negative 6 and between 2, 2 included. Here's another one. So from 2 to 5, but not from, we'll say, 2 to 9. Oops. So not from 2 to 9 because of the whole, right? So because of x equals 5. And x equals 5 is that point with the hole. We call that point uh, discontinuity. Okay. So sometimes when we study functions, we look for points of discontinuity, points where we can draw the nice, smooth, continuous curve. Okay. This lesson, you're going to like this because all it is is definitions. So I'm going to show you three pictures and three definitions here. The first one's going to come from actually our graph from the last page. It's called a jump discontinuity. And that's exactly what it sounds like. So at x equals negative 6, I jump all the way down here to, or sorry, yeah, x equals negative 6, I jump from negative 2 to negative 7 on the y axis. So we'd say this is a jump continuity at x equals negative 6. We name these using our x values, by the way. And also again, at x equals 2. So that's a jump discontinuity. So if I'm asking you for a jump discontinuity, you'd look for those gaps. The second type is what's called a removable discontinuity. And that is what we saw on the right hand side of our graph from earlier. So we have this point x equals 5. And what we see is we have a nice smooth continuous curve everywhere except that point where we have a little hole there okay um, so this is a removable discontinuity when it has a point off of the graph kind of like that or if it's just a plain old hole okay so we've actually studied these before when we studied rational functions right um, so we called these when we studied rational functions holes in our graph and then the last discontinuity we're also familiar with. It's called an infinite discontinuity. So if you look at my graph here, I'll zoom in some. We've seen this before. This graph has what we call the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. Okay, That means that the graph goes up and up and up forever or down and down and down forever on both sides of that point. Okay, so that's called an infinite discontinuity. So that's exactly what it sounds like, right? The only one that I think is maybe somewhat hard to remember is a removable discontinuity, because you're like, what does removable mean? But jump discontinuity, the graph jumps. 
infinite discontinuity, the graph goes towards infinity, up and down, so it goes up forever, down forever. Okay, so all this lesson is, is using these definitions, applying them. So there's three things that I could ask you about this graph. This is a delta math example now, because so I could ask you for a jump discontinuity. And that would be, see if you can find it yourself, that would be at x equals 5, and you're giving x values for these, because we jump here, down. A removable discontinuity, so that would be this point here, because I could fill that point in if I wanted to. So that would be x equals 4, and I could ask you for an infinite discontinuity. And that would be at our vertical asymptote we just saw as x equals negative 1 up here, right? Okay. The last thing, so those are the three definitions, and all three of those are fair game. The last thing is I could just ask you for where f is discontinuous. That's not how you spell that. Discontinuous. That looks better. Okay. So discontinuous would be anywhere where it's not continuous, right? So nice smooth curve, and then we have this gap at x equals negative 1, and then we have a nice smooth curve again. And then look at that, x equals 4, and then x equals 5 again. Okay, so discontinuous means you give me all three. Okay, and you have to get them all. That's the only thing is you might miss one. So the graph can have more than one jump, remove more infinite discontinuity. Okay. You're going to cruise through this. Um, we'll see in the next lesson.